further down. I don't want to do that. Now, by the way, I could also do edit user and go into that section there. And let's say I put John. And now I'm under edit users John. And if I do a set command, I have access to that. But let's say I want to go back to login. I can type the word up to go up one. Now I'm back. Excuse me, typo. If I type the word up, I go back to from user John to login. But let's say I want to go all the way past system, past login, back to the normal full configuration. I can type either up to, which will take me there, or I can type the word top. Now I'm at the top level configuration, denoted by the edit. It just says just edit. It doesn't say edit system login. And from here I can go and you know edit any part of the configuration that I want to edit. Those are my options from here. As you see, you have system, SNMP, services, security, routing options, routing instances. Uh, this supports multiple routing information bases or routing tables that are completely autonomous. It also supports virtual routers. So it's a little bit more robust than your typical Cisco IOS as far as that's concerned. It supports filter-based forwarding, which is kind of neat. I think their implementation of non uh, of packet filtering of, of packet filtering access lists are very robust in Junos. We'll get to that a little later, but here you are. So let's say I'm at the top. Let's commit the configuration because we know it's good. I added those users. Commit. So now I've got those users. If I do show, there's my users, Pete and John, part of the whole configuration. Now you know. Let's say I I want to. I don't like those users. I don't want them anymore. Let's say I want to get rid of them. Now in Cisco you have a problem. You have to go and back them out line by line. But here I don't have to do that. I can do rollback and look there's my configurations like we saw earlier. So let's ro say rollback zero is the one I just did. So we can go back one to rollback one. So why don't we do this though? Why don't we, what if we don't know what the difference is? We can do show, okay, pipe that, right? Because we're going to show the configuration. We're going to pipe it into, these are our options. Look at that. I can do a compare. You see that where it says compare at the very top? So I can do compare. So let's do that. Let's let it complete it for us. And then look at that. I can compare it to rollback. And look at that. I want to compare that to rollback one. And look, those are the options. In rollback one doesn't have any of these. My current configuration is plus, 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 all those lines. So if I went back to rollback one, for instance, if I type rollback one, now my configuration, look at that no users. Now if I try to exit right now I'm gonna get a warning here. The configuration has been changed but not committed. Exit with uncommitted changes let's just say yes. Now if I exit those changes are still there so if someone comes back to the system 10 minutes later and they do edit right they can do show look at that. Now here's something also interesting. I'm I'm logged in as root, right? So let's say I want to exit the CLI. Now I'm back to the actual Linux OS. Let's say I want to log out. Let's say I want to log in with John and that new password we did, Exile TV. Let's see if that works. Oh, look at this. Interesting. You see that? When I logged in as John, I got the actual CLI directly. No Unix commands. That's interesting, isn't it? Now if I do show configuration, look, my users are still there. But if I go into edit and show look at that no users so if you leave an uncommitted configuration it is there for everybody to see so it's a good thing to always do a show and then compare um, to rollback zero which is the current running config that is the best way to make sure that you don't commit changes with your changes that that have other people's stuff left in them now there's a couple different ways to clear the configuration if I type rollback zero, I've just synced my candidate configuration with the running configuration. So I am now in the latest version. You can also do it outside of edit mode. You can do clear system commit and there's no commit schedule, so that would clear a uh, pending commit. So if I scheduled a commit at midnight and I wanted to go in and do a change that would preempt that, I could clear the scheduled commit. You can also do a 
You can also clear the commit itself. So now we are in the configuration and, and I showed you that you could also clear pending commits. Uh, we don't have any right now because we haven't have anything scheduled so I'm not going to show you that feature uh, right now because we're really going a little bit slower than I'd like to go and there's a lot to cover. Uh, we haven't even talked about interfaces. As you see there's nothing configured here so this box you can't get to. Now some interesting commands. Show interfaces gives you a list of all interfaces and that's your standard you know show interface similar to what you get on Cisco but you can also do a show interfaces you'll see how you see the options here there's your interfaces but at the bottom you'll see you have detail extensive media and you have terse and also brief so if I do a brief it's not the brief that you get with Cisco look at that it's a little bit brief more brief but it's not what you would expect is it now the other thing that we can do is we can do show interfaces media and that's where we get stuff about layer 2 issues MAC address issues errors input and output errors on the actual physical devices physical errors very very interesting the other thing I want to show you is show interfaces terse now this looks a little bit more like the, the show interfaces brief that you get on Cisco, doesn't it? Now you can see that there's nothing really configured except for a loopback interface which it uses for itself. So there's nothing there. Now you see you have different interface names. We have an FE0 and an FE001. We have two fast Ethernet interfaces on this box. So let's go and see what we can do. Let's go to edit. And we want to edit interfaces. So if we do a show here, we'll see there's nothing there, right? So we want to do set, right? Let's set an interface. Let's do a set fe-0 slash 0 slash 0. It's going to ask us what to set, right? We'll look at all those options. That's a little bit much, right? So let's go back. Let's not do a set. Let's say we wanted to just go and edit fe-0 slash 0 slash 0, which is the first fast ethernet card. Now this is a little better, right? Now we're under fast ethernet. We can do a show of course there's nothing. Uh, so if we do a set here, we're back to the same menu you just got, but let's take a look and go through it. There's descriptions. I can make a description. I can do set description uh, uh, fast ether1. And of course remember do not forget to put your descriptions and there you go. Look at the descriptions. Show fast ether1. Don't forget to put your descriptions in quotation marks. It is important. You can also set the MTU here under the physical interface. Let's set that for 1500. This is by default. You don't really have to set that, but we're going to do it anyways just to get some stuff to set. Now you'll notice here you don't see anything about IP addresses. Hmm, it's very interesting. And you see this thing at the bottom, this unit, logical unit. What is that? That is totally weird, don't you think? I mean, there's nothing really even close to that on Cisco, a unit. Let's talk a little bit about that. Let's go to set unit and we got some options there. Now a unit is a logical interface, okay? Now typically if you do not have VLAN tagging turned on, which means you're not using it as a router on a stick or if you're not using it for VLAN routing, inter VLAN routing, you generally want to do set unit zero because that is usually what you use if you don't want to have multiple VLAN IDs. So now if we do show, we've got a unit zero there. So let's edit unit zero. Now, interesting enough, let's go up one. Let's go up another one. If I do edit interface, I'm already under interfaces, but let's do edit, see it says FE000? Let's do edit FE-0 slash 0 slash 0 unit zero. That's one way to do it. We just did it that way. We can also do point zero. That's a shortcut. See it gets us back to the same thing. Now under here if I do a set and a question mark you can see now we've got some different options. If we were doing VLAN trunking we could actually set the VLAN ID of this interface but we're not doing that. And I still don't see any IP options. That's a little disturbing, right? I mean what's going on here with this? Well, if you look at it, you've got a family there, a protocol family. Let's take a look at that. Let's do set family question mark. Look at that. We have 
Circuit cross connect printer.